Hi, I'm Candy Valentino, and for the last 25 years, I've been building businesses and generating wealth, starting my first business when I was just 19. Since then, I've gone on to build, scale, acquire, and exit businesses, all while investing in real estate and building financial freedom. Now it's all about you and why we're bringing you the real story behind building businesses and generating wealth here at The Candy Valentino Show. All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Candy Valentino Show. We're going to do something a little bit different today. So if you're watching the show, if you're listening to the show, we are going to call this little mini episode. We might make them a series. Who knows? We'll see if you like it. But we're calling this Candy's Cash List. This is where I'm going to give you just a quick hit list, a little how-to on a specific topic. I know you guys love the how-tos that we give, whether it's in media or the book or on content. So Candy's Cash List is going to be a quick little thing of how you can make cash, save cash, and invest more cash. Now, the most common way to make more cash is my favorite way to make more cash, starting a business. So I want to share a little secret. The safest route to building a successful business, if you don't have one yet, is what I call the four-way business intersection. I talk about this in my book, Wealth Habits. Step one, focus on what you know. It is really hard to go build new knowledge in some other area and start a business that you have no skills or experience in. But if you focus on what you know and leverage your existing knowledge, your existing skills, or experience in something that you already have valuable, that's the first step to success. Two, at this four-way intersection, Find out what people will buy. It is really tough to go innovate something new, to go create some new invention because the world has so many things already in it. But it's easy to take a market that aligns with your expertise and just either deliver more value or deliver it in a way that's different from the market now. So that's two. Third, identify what you can sell, what products or services would generate revenue within that chosen niche. And last but not least, number four, remember your why. And I don't mean the why of your life and your purpose of your life. That's a really tough thing to unpack in a list. This is the why of your business. Why are you building this business? Why do you want to create more cash? Why do you want to make more money? Is it for something very specific that you want to go buy? Is it to invest in your future? Is it to pay down debt? Whatever it is, make sure that that why is super specific so that it creates a little bit of a driving force that keeps you going. Because here's the thing, building a business is really hard. Like nobody that built a business that I know of, and I've interviewed a lot of people, not to mention my own 25 year journey, we don't have all the answers. There wasn't some magic potion or wand that was given to any person that's been successful of business is these are all of the steps that you take. You can be an intentional entrepreneur. You can be an accidental entrepreneur. There are so many ways that you can build a business. There's no one route, which is sometimes a little confusing because you think you need to have all the answers and you don't. So when you know that you don't need to have all the answers and that nobody that's been in business for two years or 20 years has it all figured out, it gives you the ability to just start anyways. Know what you want, know why you're doing this, and then just take the next step of messy action. That's what we've all done to get here and that's what you can do too. Another safe route avenue to generating more cash is to leverage what you already have, right? In, in the business analogy, we're leveraging the experience, the skills, and the knowledge that you already have because it's really hard and it takes a lot of time to go out and build something new. But another way that you can generate more cash is to leverage what you already have, physical things. So here are a few ways that you can make money if you don't wanna create a business or you already have one, or if you have a job and you wanna leverage some of the physical things that you have. Okay, here we go. Number one, sell your spaces. Subletting continues to boom and is a successful way to make side money. And it doesn't just apply to your house or your apartment. Whether you have a room in your home or a garage that's just filled with boxes, a pool in your backyard or a big spot that you don't use, you can make extra money, even a parking place in your building or your apartment, that car that you maybe aren't using very often because now you work remote, you can make more money by leveraging all of these things without it costing you more time. How do you do that? Obviously apps like Airbnb and VRBO for physical spaces, but did you know there were actually apps for all these other things? Swimply, they have an app that you can rent out your pool. Spacer, there's an app that you can rent out that extra parking spot in your garage. 
Turo, which I love, by the way, you can rent your car. So there are so many endless ways that you can make more money without it costing your time. You can make $1,000 or more depending on where you live and what you own. This will make money while you're working, while you're sleeping, while you're putting things together that you already have, you're putting it to good use. And then the most important part, it's not just about the money that you make right then, it's what you do with that money that matters. You can invest that money into a Roth IRA. If you're eligible, it's up to $6,500 for 2023 or another tax advantage vehicle, depending on your situation, so that your money can make more money through compound interest, which is really where it's all at. All right, side hustle two, sell your services. Look, everyone is looking for a little help these days and that can mean more money in your pocket. Are you an organized person? Do you tend to be a clean freak when it comes to your house? Do you love to shop or do you enjoy working with kids? There is no shortage of ways that you can make cash. And I'm talking really up to $50, $70 an hour. You can offer house cleaning services on the side, closet organization, decluttering, Errand running, yes, that's a thing. I pay someone to run errands for me. I have no shame. It's the only way I can get my everything done in my life is to outsource as much as I possibly can to other people. Shopping, I pay to have all of my shopping done. Not all of it for Christmas, but a good portion of it. I pay to have people gift wrap the things that I buy for Christmas. You can make money gift wrapping presents decorating someone's home for Christmas, doing some yard work, or even apps like TaskRabbit where you can do furniture assembly. You know, all of those Amazon boxes that come in the mail, like someone's gotta put them together. There are ways that you can make money by doing jobs like that. You'd be surprised by what's available. So if you don't want to build a business out of it, you don't want the hassle of marketing, you don't wanna do bookkeeping, use apps like TaskRabbit or look at Nextdoor or even Facebook communities, depending on where you live, a lot of cities across the U.S. have a Facebook community associated with that city. So even if you move to a new area, which is something that I did when I moved to um, Arizona from Pennsylvania, where I didn't know anyone, I joined a community group to find all sorts of resources and referrals for lawn care, for house cleaning, for all of that. So check those out and see if they're your area. It's a way that you can list your services, set your own schedule, and make some extra money. And obviously you can drive food around in your car with DoorDash or Uber Eats, which I also love. Not promoted by, I should be, because I do love them. Probably use them every day. All right, number three, side hustle, sell your skills. If you're currently working in a job which you use a special skill or a talent or some experience that you've acquired, freelancing is a great way to make money on the side. Whether it's an admin, like a virtual assistant, writing articles or blogs, doing graphic design, doing social media management, which every single entrepreneur needs, creating newsletters or digital marketing or bookkeeping, even tutoring students in your language. There are so many ways that you can sell skills online up to $75 an hour when we were doing this research. And these are totally ways that you can do this while maintaining your full-time business or your full-time job. It's really easy to do this on apps like Fiverr and Upwork as well. And if you want, you can get additional exposure on apps like Nextdoor or those Facebook communities like I mentioned. These are all really easy ways to find work and extra cash. I like to keep things simple. I like a simplistic business model, something that we can duplicate and implement right away because the speed of your decision making is what's going to propel you to a greater level of success and more money, which is what we're talking about on this list. The ability to work online and make more money has truly never been easier. A freelancer controls what you charge, how many hours you work, and when you work them. Just make sure you do this one thing. Search for the jobs that you're looking to post so that you can get a general idea of the going hourly rate so that you are making sure that you don't undercharge for your time. And if I can give you maybe a pro tip, if you start doing this, and you implement this in the next 48 hours, which if you want to make more cash, you could literally do this in the next 48 hours. If you like it and you see that you're getting real money from it and you wanna turn it into a real business, I want you to just consider a few things. Make sure that you are getting separate from that business. You can get an EIN number by going to irs.gov. Always make sure that you don't mix your business income with your personal income. 
open a separate business account, even if you're just doing a little bit in the beginning, make sure that you use that LLC and that EIN number so that you keep your business income and your expenses in that account. People aren't talking about this enough because as your business grows, you're gonna wanna look at other things. And as you start making more money, wrapping gifts or, or shopping for people, you wanna make sure that you're also taking advantage of bookkeeping so that you can get those deductions. But you don't need to learn all of these things. You don't need to understand them all. If you wanna make more money, you just gotta take the first steps and then as you're making money, come back and listen to the last half of this. And we'll talk about all the things you need to do to make sure that you can grow that business, whether that's obtaining business insurance or incorporating, getting tax deductions. But all of this that I shared is a really great start. I also wanna share with you, this isn't really like a cash list, but I wanna share this with you because I feel like starting my first business at 19, not knowing what the heck I was going to be doing, opening additional businesses since, having a multiple location, running teams, all of this stuff. Like you think you need all of this information, but really what you need are just a few things. And these things you're not gonna find in the business books. You're not gonna find them in college. You're not gonna find them in schools. They don't teach them to us. But I'm gonna share a few things that if you did nothing but this, if you come up with some idea of how you wanna make extra money and you just start, don't have all the answers, but you do these four things, I promise you in a year from now, you'll be successful. Number one, show up. It is so important to show up to your dreams, even when no one is looking, even when the cameras are off, even when you have no clue what to do. Show up, be all in, and don't expect other people, whether that's the people in your life or your employees or your friends, don't expect them to understand your dream. Don't expect them to cheerlead your dream, to champion your dream, and don't expect them to show up. When you wanna create something with your life, when you want this next version of life to come your way, it's up to you to protect that dream, for you to push it forward, and for you to show up for yourself. So number one is show up. Number two is play the long game. Everybody is looking for an angle, a shortcut, a get rich quick scheme, a way to double their revenue now, a way to make more money now, but rarely does anyone wanna do the work for years or decades, or more importantly, whatever it takes to get there. Playing the long game, whether it's in business or in building wealth or having a family, being in a relationship, whatever it is, is worth it. But it's really the only way to get to where you wanna go. Because we talk a lot about on the show is compound interest. Compound interest is to your money like compounding time is to your life and your goals. Like anything that you want to do, you gotta be willing to do it long enough in order to get there. So playing the long game is critical and important. And I promised you one thing, it will take longer than you think. Everything I've done in my life has not been easy. It has not been waving a magic wand and all of a sudden we're there. It has taken time, it has taken grit, it has taken hustle, and it has taken one thing that I think makes all entrepreneurs successful, which is relentless persistence. That when you are met with adversity, you're met with challenge, you're met with the what's going on between your two ears and how you think you can't do it, or you're not worthy enough to do it, or you're not capable or connected enough, all of those things, when you break through that and you show up anyways and you play the long game, I promise you that it will eventually be worth it. Your dreams are worth it, you are worth it, and you are capable of more things than you can even imagine right now. Because every single thing that you want in your life, every goal that you have, whatever you think that you're listening to this for that you want to achieve, I want to promise you one thing. You're actually capable of more. Because everything you think you want is based on an old version of you. It's based on your prior experience. It's based on your past behavior. It's based on your childhood. It's based on the goals that you went after and succeeded or didn't. It's based on the ecosystem of people that are around you. What you're actually capable of is greater. But you have to take the steps, be willing to show up and play the long game in order to see what that next level really can look like. Clarity comes from motion, it comes from doing, it comes from being on the path. It's not a straight path, it's more of a, a field, if you will. When I grew up in a small town, there were more cornfields than buildings, there were more cows than people. And so when, when we look through a maze, there's all of these places that you can get lost and you can make a wrong turn, but that's what building a business is, that's what wealth, creating wealth is, that's what a life is about. It's not a straight line. So show up, play the long game. I promise that it's worth it. Number three, this is a tough one. But remember, you're not owed anything. You are not owed anything. 
The world doesn't owe you this success. It doesn't owe you wealth. It doesn't owe you happiness or love. However, the most powerful thing that you can remember is that you are worthy of it and you are free to create it. Once we start taking responsibility for our lives, for the decisions that we made to get to this point in our life, and we understand that we can shift those decisions at any time and change the future course of our life, we realize that we have the power to create or change anything that we desire. So you're not owed anything. You're not entitled to anything. But the most powerful, beautiful thing is that you have the power to create anything that you want. And number four, gratitude. I know gratitude is like some piffy line that you see on the internet, you know, be grateful, have a gratitude process or practice. But I want to tell you one thing. If you don't appreciate those first days in business, if you don't appreciate the customer who loves you as much as the customer who hates you, and I promise you one thing, you actually learn from the latter. If you don't appreciate that first $5,000 a month, you will never value the first $50,000 a month. If you aren't grateful for those first few clients, you'll never be able to lead thousands of clients. Starting a gratitude practice is intentional because just like anything that we do in life, that we want to achieve success or wealth, our brains are not wired for success. They're not wired for wealth. They're not, they're not wired for you to go out and do it. Your brain is, is trying to keep you safe. It's wired for protection. So just like you have to every single day go out and do the reps to be successful, to have a, an attitude of gratitude, it's a practice and a focus every single day. And I know that as we're coming into this portion of the year, depending on when you're watching this or listening to this, gratitude might be a word that we talk about a lot, but are you living it? Gratitude comes in different levels, right? We have gratitude for a thing, like I give you this cup and it's a surprise and you're grateful for the cup, but there's a different level of gratitude that every single thing in life that happens to you, you start to be grateful for even the things you don't understand, for even the challenges, for you to be able to start each day and look back at all of the challenges that you experienced, all the adversity that you faced, remembering that if you wouldn't have had those moments, you wouldn't know what success really is. Without those valleys in life, you wouldn't know what mountains you've climbed. So being grateful for every day, every challenge is not easy. We can say it, but it's actually hard to apply. So how do you do this? Every single day when I wake up, I have a little rhyme. This is what I've had for probably 30 years. And it's before my feet hit the floor, I find five things I'm grateful for. It's really how I start my day. And I might start my day and want to grab my phone and and do emails and do texts, but I literally stop myself just like I won't go out of the house without brushing my teeth. I'm not going to let my feet hit the floor until I find five things that I'm grateful for. And it might just be that you woke up. It might just be that you have a house. There's, There's levels of this even when you're in challenge. And then I want to challenge you to do one thing. At the end of every day, I want you to ask yourself two questions. So if you start every day with that, At the end of the day, I'll tell you the two questions I ask myself every single day, 365, even Thanksgiving and Christmas and all the different things. I always ask myself, what could I have done better today? How could I have shown up better today? Could I have handled that conversation better today? Could I have greeted our producer here better today? Could I have been more intentional when I was talking with Tyler today? I think about all the things I did today at night What could I have done better? And then I try to learn from that failure of maybe not connecting with someone or not teaching a certain way or not communicating a point a certain way. And I try to learn from it. And then the second question is, after you ask yourself, what could I have done better today? The second is, what am I really grateful for today? What one moment, one conversation, one what one thing in your day could you find gratitude? If you just start your day every single day, with a few things you're grateful for in the morning and one final thought before you go to sleep at night, I promise it will shift your whole reality. What we focus on grows. And when you're always looking at the world of what's wrong and what you don't have and what um, people on social media do have and, and that comparison robs you of joy, you start to see more of it. It's just the way that our brain works. So when you focus on what you're grateful for and you have that intentional practice every day, You will truly create a life of being grateful and having gratitude for all the things that happen to you. 
All right, guys, I went a little bit on a tangent on that last one, but I feel it's important because a lot of times we talk about the tactics and the strategies about business and wealth, but there's so much more to it. Your net worth will never outgrow the person that you are, the experiences that you have, the knowledge that you develop, being a never-ending student. So it's important that we talk about a lot of these emotional sides of wealth and business because otherwise I'm only giving you part of the story, not the real story. And that's what my goal is to bring you every single week, every single episode when you're tuning in, watching, or listening to us. All right, guys, I hope you have an incredible rest of your day. Thanks so much for tuning in to The Candy Valentino Show. We'll see you next time.